28. And uh, it's no accident we've been singing the songs uh, that we have. And no guess is for the last song that we will sing when you, uh, when you see the verses, when we read and hopefully when, you, uh, when we go through the message. So this is Blessings for Obedience is the, is the heading in my Bible. We're just reading verses 1 to 14. And if you faithfully obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. He will bless you in the light, in the land rather, that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself, as he has sworn to you, if you, commit, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in all his ways. And all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb and in the fruit of your livestock and the fruit of your ground, within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall only go up and not go down. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Let's pray again. Father, we want to we wanna hear you. We want to listen. We want to apply. Lord, change us. And we ask, Father, that you would simply hear from heaven, that you would come down, that you would minister to every heart. Lord, wherever people are gathered here today, Lord, we pray that you would speak clearly. And the Lord God, you would simply get the glory. We pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, I wonder, can you remember a time in your life where you have been most free? So where there have been shackles broken off or you just, you just feel free. You, you are free to, uh, to do absolutely whatever your heart's desire is, whatever you want to do, you did. That was within your reach. You were able to do that. Uh, I think that is how Lion feels. I'm not sure. He's the king of the jungle. He just wanders wherever he wants to go. Um, whatever he likes to do, that's what he does. Well, here we are with Israel on hearing the law. They have been set free. So we know the situation is that they, they have been, um, they've come out of Egypt and they've been put into the land. And so they've had 40 years in the wilderness. They've been refined, as we know. They're on the eastern side and they're looking out towards the west. They're looking out towards Israel, this land, and they are coming into that land of promise. And we're told that this is a land of blessing. This is a land of abundance that is flowing with milk and honey. And they're going to occupy, it says, the entirety of of the land, verse 1, and not just the land, but it says they will be exalted above 
all other nations, even high above all the other nations. So what's the nature of these blessings? And we just saw it briefly then. It's like this. And we often, we often talk about this cup that is overflowing, but it says it will come upon you. This blessing will come upon you. These blessings will come upon you. So what does it look like? It's sim- simply symbolic of this. It's, it's over an abundance, more, more than you can possibly need, more, more than you can possibly drink or use. It's a, it's, a, it's a land that is overflowing, a cup that is more than full. These blessings in this new land, it says, they will overtake you. This is like an overwhelming thing. They will be so abundant upon you, you won't have room to be able to deal with them all. You won't have need for all of them. It exceeds the abundance or the the needs that you have. This is the imagery here. So much far above anything that you could ask or imagine. Water's a funny thing, isn't it? Um, That's a photo of January... uh, 2011 and you can see that's our that's our Wyvernhoe Dam and all five floodgates are open so you can see the dam level there it's actually up to 197 percent and so they had to open all five floodgates you can see the land even beyond the dam wall is already flooded Um, so the levels had already risen and they didn't want the dam wall to break, obviously. And so they released all that water. And we know all the situations surrounding the class action and everything else. This is an overabundance. This is more rain that we could possibly use. In fact, it was so much. Um, we'd gone through drought. Some of us were praying for rain. Well, this, is, this, this, was, this was far and above Anything we could ask, not necessarily imagine, because we had one in 1974. But this is the thing. And so we know North Queensland as well. They, they had uh, floods as well. And we never thought that that size of flood would overtake us again. So while we would say this, is a time of tr- this was a time of trial, this is, this is the imagery of blessing. I just wanted to get in our minds, how do we actually understand this? This is an overabundance of blessing, of abundance, of everything. This is the imagery that we have. This blessing will overtake them. And indeed, that's, that's what's happened here. We were overtaken by all this water. But when they came into the land of Israel... It says they will be blessed in absolutely every way. Uh, I don't know what's happening to the slides there, Pete. You might have to adjust it. But it says they will will be blessed in the city. So every relationship that they have, they will be blessed in the field. So in the city, what does that mean? Well, in the city, obviously, high-density living. People are living closer together and closer proximity it just means you will be blessed in all your relationships and so they will be relationships of peace they will be relationships of abundance that your dealings will be fruitful so if you are you are you're in the you're in the business of making money you're in the business of selling all your products all your services would be blessed stealing and dishonesty wouldn't be part of of the inheritance it wouldn't be part of the community everybody would have the same goal everybody would have the same focus everybody would have the same abundance and we just think of this and we think well surely where there's got to be where there's winners and losers not in this new land they were all to be blessed just an abundance and not just in the city but in the field as well so it says that rain follows in the right seasons. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give you rain in your land or to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. And we know that in 2011, yeah, it was in the season. It was in summer that we got all that rain, but it was too much. It says here that it would come in the season, in the right season. Um, his good treasury 
give rain to the land in its season and bless the work of your hands. They're not going to be washed away. They're not going to be taken from you. But it's going to be just the right amount for that excessive abundance. It says that enemies shall not rob. They will not come into the land even though they might come towards you one way. It says they'll flee seven ways. That basically means that God scatters them. Their counsel will not stand. Their counsel will not be part of this new land. This new land will be protected and blessed by the Lord their God, by Yahweh, the covenant-keeping God. Their families will be blessed. And this is another thing where in our society... We have families, but there's fractionation, isn't there? There's, there's discontent. There's, there's a destroying. We know that that message, especially I think in the West, is just one of, it, it's disjointed. But it says, the Lord here will make you abound in prosperity. It says, the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your livestock, the fruit of your gra- ground within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. So this is abounding in prosperity. And it means that debt is never in question. It's, it's, never, it's never an issue. You don't have that debt. It's, it says there will be an abundance there. You're not going to have to borrow for this. And this is the other thing that we, we know, especially in Australia, is that um, yeah, a lot of farmers have been crushed by debt. And, and so you're servicing a loan. You're, you're servicing a, a, a bank debt. You're, you're not actually experiencing the blessing that that extra blessing goes to the bank and they, of course, get uh, more of that abundance. Well, that's, that's not what is spoken about here in Deuteronomy 28 and these first 14 verses. This is about abundance coming upon the people. Uh, every part of their lives will be blessed. And so we know even today we have mortgages i have a mortgage i know many others of you have mortgages or you have a a personal loan a car loan or maybe there's another debt that you're paying off maybe even you've um you've got credit card debt and i think that's one of the toughest ones to get out of when you when you're in that situation but can i just say that the god of abraham isaac and jacob the the God that some of us have been reading about in our, in our scriptures and certainly here in the book of Deuteronomy, that's, that's not the picture. That's not the picture that's being painted. Because we are saved by grace, even as we've sung, it, that because it is grace, it's, it's something that comes from God's hand. Well, God's hand is not limited. It's not slack. It's not short. It's not... It's, it's, it's not um, uh, it doesn't doesn't it's not restricted in any way because he is god and he is in complete control and so this excessive abundance comes in this is the picture of those that are about to inherit the land of canaan which will become the land of israel is that they will grow in the land and they will be blessed in the land and this is the other thing is that israel these people they would be the lenders and not the borrowers. They would be the ones that give rather than the ones uh, that have to receive and then pay interest. It says, verse 12, The Lord will open to you His good treasury, the heavens, to give rain to the land in its season, to bless you the work of the hands. And then it says, And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And this is another thing that we have in the West. It's this incredible uh, debt and I don't have to remind anybody, it's been in the news, but you know, that with, with the money that we have now, with you know, JobKeeper and JobSeeker and uh, the stimulus package that many businesses have been blessed by, and even charities and even ourselves, you know, that costs money. It, 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 where's it coming from? Well, you have to borrow. Uh, you, you have to uh, accumulate a debt, and Australia is certainly doing that. We know with our defence spending, is that another over $100 billion, something like that, $130 billion? Is it 270, Ben? Yeah, that's just incredible. You know, where's that going to come from? That's it. You see, Doug and I, we're, we're in that generation. We, we can just, we can check out. We'll be in heaven. But these guys, 
They're going to have to pay for it. Have you thought about how you're going to pay for it, Josh? <laughs> move. Maybe move to America. No. I wouldn't go to be Argentina. I actually had a look. I had a look at the at the you know which countries are in debt. Well, you can imagine. So, which is number one? America by by exceeding an abundant debt. <laughs> they they are they are number one. I can't even remember number two. Uh, but but anyway, Australia. I think it's number seventeen. Israel's number fifty two. They give out a lot and they, they, they actually receive, if they're going to receive money, they don't receive it with debt. Uh, they're, they're the smart ones. If you're going to get money, don't have a bill associated with it. Um, and then others below that, that, well, they haven't got enough money to get any debt. They're, they're third world countries. So Israel were called to be the ones who give and they are the ones that charge interest. I think we've got it backwards, you know. Um, while we have such excessive abundance, we, we work to pay off a lot of debt. We work to pay off a lot of interest. Well, that again is not... That's not what we read in the Scriptures. And I know wise money managers, those who certainly are in Christ, uh, there, is, there, is a, there, is a, there is a hatred or there is a, there's a, a, a pulling it back uh, from uh, huge loans because... Uh, that, that is not, you don't, you don't want to be paying off and be burdened by debt and certainly interest. And Israel, they were coming into this land, such was the abundance, such was the, this cup overflowing, such was the overwhelming blessing they could give. And um, Fiona and I have been going through uh, Genesis, a bit like Josh, actually, and we've been listening to just the abundance that came upon Joseph. Now, remember, there were seven years of, of blessing and abundance and there were going to be seven lean years. Well, what do you do? You know that there are going to be lean years. And so Jacob, or jo- Joseph rather, he, he stood, he, um, he, he, built, he built barns and, um, and, and storehouses and then he became the one who lent and they... They had to receive when the, um, when the drought was on, when the famine was on, they had to come to him. Well, he charged interest as well. And eventually, when uh, they didn't have any more money, they didn't have any more livestock, they sold their land. Well, what happened after they sold their land? The only thing that they had was themselves. And they became indentured then to Joseph and to Egypt and they became slaves. God is a God of abundance. And maybe some of you are feeling this morning, you're going, well, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> I'm not feeling that abundance. Where's, where's the abundance? Where's that, that cup overflowing? Where, where is that, well, I just have much more than enough? Well, keep listening. These blessings are concluded for Israel. The phrase that Israel says, they would be the head. They would be the head and not the tail. Verse 13. But I wonder, folks, in reading this passage this morning, because the, the passage after it from verse 15 has just reminded me again this, this week, you see all the things that will be taken from Israel. You see all of those things. It's not a blessing. It's actually a curse. And they're horrific. And I, I, I thought, no, I want to preach on blessing. I don't want to preach on the, on the other side. I'd rather the head and not the tail, you know, when you flip the coin. And so that, that's the thing. We're gonna, we, we, we want the head. We want, we want to be the head. We want to be the head and not the tail. We want to be that one of abundance. But that's the flip side of the coin. That's the other side. So the, 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 the question, I have a question this morning is, did Israel, so they're about to come into the land. They know that there's this land of promise, this land of blessing. They're about to inherit it. And they're coming into this land. Did Israel ever achieve this level of prosperity listed out here in the first 14 verses of Deuteronomy 28? This level, did they ever achieve this level of prosperity, this level of influence, this level of Blessing. 
Well, can I say, with the exception of the rule of David and even Solomon, that no, they didn't. Solomon had burdened, he'd he'd grown so wealthy within himself, but the people themselves, they were actually burdened, even though he'd, uh, he'd had a reign of peace and abundance for himself and his family. There were, there were taxes upon the people. And so they didn't necessarily feel it. In fact, uh, he maintained a level of peace and prosperity simply by marrying the daughters of the surrounding kingdoms. Uh, and we know where that led King Solomon. It took away his heart. And of course, the blessings that he had were taken away. So Israel didn't. They didn't know this, this period of blessing that is spoken of here in Deuteronomy. Why not? Because there were qualifiers. And I don't know whether you, whether you saw it. Maybe you just saw all the blessings as we read there. Blessed you'll be when you go in, when you come out, your womb and your, your livestock and your barn and all of those things that, that the qualifier is. And we looked at testing a couple of weeks ago. But the qualifier is, is that there need to be there needs to be obedience. So nine times in this chapter, and we, we may have skipped over it when we read it. And I think we do this. Nine times in this chapter, the words obey or carry out the commands or follow after the Lord are listed in conjunction with the blessings that are associated with those words. You see, it's not just when, when we can't be, and I think this is, a, this is a situation we've got to get as Christians. We can't be those that, are, that act like spoilt children. We can't be those that presume upon grace. And we just say, well, God's just given me this grace, and so I can do whatever the heck I like. I can be whatever I want to be. I can do because I'm saved by grace. I'm under grace, not law. But the qualifier is that we need to be obedient. You shall have no sin among you, you saved by grace. You're under grace, not law. We forget the first part of that verse, don't we, in Romans? You see, they started well, Israel. They came across and they defeated those that are in Jericho. They had a bit of a mishap in Ai because of covetousness. But they sorted themselves out and they started to take the land. They started to know the abundance. They started to know the blessings. They cleared out the land. They won the wars. They they knew some level of blessing. They inherited the land. But they failed to move out all the inhabitants. And so as we had and as we know, this is the Lord your God. This is the Lord your God. The Lord your God is one, as we sung. The Lord your God... He, he, is, he is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So there was an identity there. And that identity started to fade and go and be blended in with all the other gods. They didn't take out all the inhabitants of the land. Well, this is a thing. It's like leaven going through the whole batch, you know, the whole bunch of uh, uh, 